Hi there, I'm Mr. C and welcome to my kitchen science show. I'm so excited to be here today because we are going to work on a tin foil boat stem challenge. Now before we get into it, I want to talk about some of the materials that we're going to be needing today. I always have my safety glasses with me when we're doing experiments, um, but today we're just going to be working with water and tin foil so it's not as important. As always, make sure you talk to your parents before you do the, any type of experiment. Um, we're going to be working with water today, so I would also suggest that you have some paper towel around uh, or a towel of some sorts. Now first off, why is it classified as a STEM project? So STEM, as if you remember, is science, technology, engineering, and math. So we're going to be using all four of those disciplines as we design and build our tinfoil boat. Now the challenge that has been given to us is we need to design a boat that will carry a, a package of Mentos. Now the first thing I always like to do is just explore. So we're going to take some tin foil. It doesn't really matter what size it is. So I have my piece of paper. I folded it in half just because it was an easier shape to work with. But there's a couple different ways. I could look at the traditional boat which has a bow on it. So I could make it with a little bit of a, a front part that looks like that and almost like a canoe. Um, so I could do that kind of a design of a boat and just push it down so that we have it. You want to make sure that it's watertight. So I probably also use some tape to be able to hold these together. But um, I'll show you later. It does float. Now mine seems to fall off to the side a little bit, so I'm thinking that I need to flatten out the bottom a little bit so that it will float a little bit easier and that I can pile some pennies in there to, to calculate the weight. So I flattened it a little bit and it's starting to float. Now I've played around with a lot of different designs um, and I've decided that the easiest one for us to do, or for me to try today, you can try whatever design you want, I'm going to create a flat bottomed, so it is a square based uh, with equal sides on it. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my piece of tin foil, and I'm just going to approximately, for the first time, I'm just going to approximately cut out a square. Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to fold the edges up and I want to try to get them as equal as possible. And I'll come around here for a sec. I'm going to fold them up so I'm creating equal sides all the way around. And I might speed this up on the video so that you can see it. So I've got that. I'm going to do the same on the side. I'm going to slow it down. I'm going to show you my boat. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some tape and I am going to tape the corners so it provides me with a little bit more strength on the corners. So I'm just putting the tape on the corners like that so that I have additional strength for the corner. So now that I've done is I've created my boat, flat bottom. All the sides are relatively the same height. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put it into my bottle or into my bowl of water. And then slowly I'm going to add my pennies to see how many pennies it can hold before it sinks. So we're going to put the boat into the water and as you can see it floats quite nicely there. And what I'm going to do now is I'm going to start adding my pennies and seeing how many pennies it takes before the boat actually sinks. So here is what I've discovered and you can see here that it's starting to go down a little bit. I've got 43 pennies in right now. This is actually probably my third attempt. At first and when I was putting them in I was putting the pennies into the middle uh, and it was sinking down because the tin foil isn't very strong. So this time, or one of these times, I put them more on the outside. So I'm at 43, 44, 45, 46, 47, 48, 
49. And again, keeping them on the outside so it gives it strength. 50, 51, 52, 53, and 53, you see it just fell down in. So I performed that experiment about three times and the average amount of pennies that I got into the boat before it sank was about 54. So sometimes it was 55, 53, but then 54 seemed to be the average. So we're going to use that for our calculations. So here comes the math. Now we're going to take a look at the measurements of our boat. So we're going to uh, calculate or measure the length of it, the width, and then the height of the sides. So here's where our trusty calculator comes in. We said that our length was 8.5 centimeters, our width was 8.5 centimeters, and our height of the walls was 2.5 centimeters. So we've got 8.5 times 8.5 times 2.5. Well, that's a little bit messy there. So let's use the calculator to calculate that. And our total comes out to approximately 180. So we go 180, and that number is actually centimeters cubed. So the volume of our boat is 180 centimeters cubed. So now we have to calculate the weight of the pennies before the ship or before the boat actually sank. So I'm quite lucky, I've been collecting pennies for a while. So most of my pennies are actually from the 1960s. So we took a look on the internet and the mass of a penny from that era is actually 3.24 grams, which is about a gram heavier than current pennies. So we had 54 pennies in the boat before it sank, which we would calculate the 54 times 3.24. And that comes out to, round it up, 175 grams. So we're going to write that down. Equals 175 grams. Now we're going to make that a little neater and we're going to put it together so we can see any relationships that come out. So here are some of the trials that we did with our tinfoil boat. So this was the original one where we had our dimensions, length times width times height, equal to 183, sorry, 180 centimeters cubed. And our penny mass, the total mass was 175 grams before it sank. Our second trial was a smaller boat and it measured out at 98 cubic uh, centimeters. And its penny mass it could hold was 94 grams. And in our third trial, it was a bigger boat so 245 centimeters cubed, and it could hold 239 grams. And if we look at that, this relationship, we can determine a couple of things. One, the larger the boat, the more mass it could carry, and that sort of makes sense as we think of that. The other thing we noticed is that the volume of the boat and the mass of the pennies were very close in each situation. So when we are determining what size of boat to build, all we have to do is look at the mass of the cargo and then figure out the length times width times height that would match or be a little above the gram weight. So we're gonna try that with the Mentos that we were given and see if we can calculate out what size of a boat we would need from these discoveries we've made. So here's what we found out. If you look right on the package, it says four rolls, four times 37 grams equal 148 grams. So if we're just looking at one roll of Mentos, that is 37 grams. So if we were to use the findings that we had before, we need to build a boat. I'm gonna to try to write this above it. We need to have a boat with a volume that has to be a little bit over 37 grams. So we're gonna go, we're gonna go 45 centimeters cubed. So remember, volume equals length times width times height, and that has to equal 
45 for our experiment. So we're gonna come back and we're gonna take a look at some of the design options that we use. So I corrected that. If we're calculating volume, obviously it's centimeters cubed. So we've got the measurements. We know the Mentos tube is 15 centimeters long and needs to be 2.5 centimeters wide just to hold it. So times height has to equal the 45 centimeters cubed at least. So we broke that down, 15 times 2.5 is 37.5, times the height has to equal that. So what height of the sides of the boat do we need? Well, if we just did guess and check, we could go, let's say the sides are one centimeter. So we'd go 37.5 times one equals 37.5. So that's too small. So what about if we went 37.5 times 1.5? And I did that calculation. And if we did 37.5 times the height of the sides at 1.5 centimeters, that will come out to about 56 centimeters cubed. And that should be enough to hold our mento. So that's the new dimensions we're gonna try for our boat. The boat is gonna be 15 centimeters long, 2.5 centimeters wide, and 1.5 centimeters on the sides. And if our science is right and our math is correct, that is the close to the minimum size boat that we would need to float our mentos. So let's design it and see what happens. So we decided that 15 centimeters long, so that's along that side by 2.5 centimeters wide. So our uh, mentos will fit right inside the boat like that. And then we calculated that we needed our sides to be 1.5 centimeters. So that's the prototype. I'll be able to fold that and then we'll be able to do a trial run. So here's what we've got. You can still see the lines inside that we did for the dimensions, but we folded it on those lines. So we have created our prototype boat. And again, what we were trying to do is what's the minimum size of boat that we could uh, design to float our Mentos. And you can see the Mentos fit right inside of there. So here's what's going to happen. We're going to try to put this in, but my concern is it's going to roll off to the side and sink anyways. But let's try it. We're going to put this in here. I'm going to set it in carefully. And there we go. It is floating, even though it is on its side. We have a floating Mentos. And that is big enough, exact size, to be able to hold it. And that was all done through our trial and error and our calculations. Well done, there's our STEM challenge. Minimal amount of material to be able to build a boat to support our Mentos uh, role. So that was exciting for me. We were able to start with our own design of a boat, do the calculations of its volume, and then calculate how much weight in terms of mass that it could hold. And again, I used pennies for mine, but you could use whatever you need to be able to add slowly into it. Then we were able to come up with a calculation, the math behind the science, where we found out that the volume of the boat matched pretty close to the actual mass that it can could hold. So then we found out that our uh, Mentos was uh, 40, what did we say? 45 grams, sorry, 37 grams. And we designed a boat just big enough to, to hold it. And it's still floating down here and I'm gonna pull it out. So that's our design that we came up with. So my question, next question would be, we used water. That's what we have in this bowl here. What about if we used milk? What about if we used oil? What about if we used some type of other um, uh, uh, liquid? Would that change the design of the boat? Would it have to be bigger? Would it have to be smaller? That would be a great follow-up, something that we could do as an extension and have more fun with uh, floating tin foils. I hope you enjoyed our STEM challenge today. Um, we're hopefully going to be adding a few more STEM challenges as the days go by from some of our teacher candidates. And uh, come back and check My Kitchen Science Show often to see what new exciting things we're doing in the kitchen. Thanks so much. 
Please subscribe and like, and we'll see you later.